Hello, in this video I'm going to just continue on from previous videos looking at a couple of past paper questions involving resolving horizontally and vertically. Uh, for, they're both quite old past paper questions from Edexcel. This one's from 2005. It was the first question on the paper, quite straightforward, because there's only three forces involved. So anyway, let's get on with it. A good diagram is always a good idea here. We're told that there's a horizontal force of 12 newtons. And in this question, basically, it's a case of getting the direct, get, putting the other forces in and um, getting the diagram right and all the rest of it. So we've got 12 newton force going this way. Then we've got a tension force, which obviously is pulling away uh, this way. And that's at an angle of 20 degrees to the vertical. Okay, and force downwards, it, it, it tells us the weight at some point. No, it doesn't tell us the weight, but that's fine. We can work out the weight. Okay, and um, we're going to do this question, first of all, by resolving horizontally and vertically. Let's just do the working up here. So resolving horizontally will give us the tension, because if I resolve horizontally, the W force won't come into it. The weight will not come into my equation at all. So resolving horizontally, let's get on with it. I might just uh, annotate this different color. Now we, we basically want the component of T going that way. And that component has to be T sine 20 because it's away from the marked angle over here. It's away from that angle there. So that's T sine 20. So that's T sine 20, and that must be counteract with the 12 Newton force, as it were. So let's write that down. Um, so we have T sine 20 going left, or whatever, minus 12 equals zero. Or we might as well just say they, they balance out. It's uh, just as easy to write that now. Force is left equal force is right. T sine 20 equals 12 so then that gives us t is equal to 12 divided by sine 20 dead easy so that comes to 35.1 newtons newtons okay i would give at least three significant figures uh, here Okay, so 35.1 newtons resolving horizontally. Okay, let's get rid of that bit now. And that. Okay, so now let's do the vertical. That's basically answered part A. Part B, um, we are going to resolve vertically. And if I resolve vertically, Again, we're looking at the component here of T. And that's got to be T cos 20 because it's right next to the angle I've marked. And that's going to counteract with the W that I've just put on. So it's, uh, that's T cos 20 going upwards. It's going to balance with the W going downwards. So that's T cos 20 minus w equals zero or just equals w but we already know what t is so w is equal to t cos 20 is equal to 35.1 which hopefully i got st stored properly on my calculator uh, times cos 20 and that gets me to 33.0 newtons that's it. Very easy marks. I suspect this is from 2005. I suspect nowadays the mark allocation will be a little bit less generous than that. That seems to, although it was the first question on the paper. I think if anything have got harder over the last 15 years or so. Um, now, what else would I say uh, about this? Oh yeah, I just wanted to mention at this point that um, I see some students, maybe because they've learnt uh, other methods in physics or whatever, just go to what's called a free force diagram. I don't normally do it this way, partly because, not because it's not a good method on this question, it's just that um, often it's applied badly and inappropriately in other questions. But what you can do 
in this one that if we were to draw this more to scale actually it'd probably be easy if this were drawn if this were drawn to scale that would be more like 12 newtons there and um, what you would do if you did a free force diagram is to say right the 12 newton force is going in that direction like that we've got w going downwards and we've got a t going upwards so it's almost like a free force equilibrium because we've got the resultant of three forces one force being the t the other force being the the, the 12 sorry the other force being the w and the other force being the t and of course from that we can actually get the we can get w and t, t pretty quickly just from normal trigonometry because we can say that um w over 12 uh equals to uh w over 12 equals to tan 20 no 12 over w equals tan 20 And that will get us w straight away w is 33.0 newtons and you could get um you can also work out the t by saying that um using the the sign um 12 over t equals sine 20 so that gives us t is equal to 12 over sine 20 which gets us straight to that that we had over there which gets 35.1 now if this last bit confused you or you've never seen it before and you thought oh, i don't like that well it's fine just ignore it pretend you haven't heard it but i'm just talking to those students who maybe have seen this somewhere else and use this uh, method we still have to the problem with this is it won't work unless it won't be an appropriate method if we have any more than three forces so this is what's called a free force diagram so please do not do this way unless well i think you really need two things for this to be a good method or in any way uh, an appropriate method so this is alternate other alternative and you can ignore this i think i don't think you, for mechanics maybe physics a different thing but for mechanics i don't think you need this method um it's more of a special case that works in a few cases so free force diagram and what we really need is first of all there to only be three forces so four forces forget it you're going to have to use this resolving method then and the other thing you probably makes it a decent method or an appropriate method is that with the we've got a right angle between two of the forces so that the free force diagram is right angled rather than using a sine or cosine rule that those two things together make this probably an okay method i still to be honest often use the resolve in anyway but i just did that because i often see students do that it tends to be students who do physics and um scale diagrams and that type of thing but please never use this method if you've got more than three forces because it won't work well not easily anyway so and most students will mess up and it'll be too hard so we need to resolve horizontally and vertically right okay i've and to, to, with that in mind let's have a look at another question now this is a good example of that we would never be able to do a free force diagram on this the, that method because we've got four forces effectively um right so here it's talking about a smooth bead is threaded on a light and extensible string the fact that it's smooth um it is uh, quite important here because that will mean the tension is kind of both sides the same both sides smooth means tension both sides same they do expect you to understand a few modeling considerations state how you've used the fact that it's smooth would mean the tensors both sides but remember we've got notice we've got four forces here effectively because the tension there is twice is occurring twice um pulling both ways 
So let's do that by resolving horizontally and vertically as well. Let's do a diagram. Change the colour back to blue. So here we've got six Newton force. We've got tension going upwards. We've got a weight going downwards, which again is one of the things we've been asked to find. And we've got a tension going here. Oop. Oop. I'm just struggling to draw a straight line at the moment. Tension going there, where this angle is alpha. Probably want to work that alpha out first of all. Well, it tells us tan alpha equals 3 over 4. You can use your calculator if you want, but at this point we can see it's a 3, 4, 3, 4, 5 triangle. So if that's alpha, tan alpha is 3 over 4, sine alpha is going to be 3 over 5, and cos alpha is going to be 4 over 5. So we know what alpha is. So again, we can just resolve horizontally and vertically. Resolve horizontally. Well, it's just asked for the tension first, but let's resolve... I think resolving horizontally will give us the tension. Notice it's got to be the same both sides because it's smooth. So we've got, again, we need to think about which component is this part of T. Because T can be split into two bits. This bit is T cos alpha because it's next to the angle there. And this bit here is T sine alpha because it's away from this angle there. So we can do our resolving equations. Again, we can t say that they add up to zero in any particular direction. So 6 minus t cos alpha equals zero. Being honest, I often um, just skip to forces one way must be equal forces the other. Forces left must be equal forces right. So we have 2 cos alpha. T cos, t cos alpha equals to 6. So that gives me... Uh, t we know that cos alpha is equal to three over five, uh, four over five. So t times four over five equals six. So that gives me t equals seven point five newtons. And then resolving vertically, we've got um, the. We've actually got two bits here. We've got, don't forget the, the T that's already there. Because we've got the T sine alpha. Upwards. That bit, I'll just rub, it, I'll rub that bit off now so we can see that. T sine alpha. But we've also got, that's the component of the T that's here. Okay. But we've also still got, we've also got this T here. that's going upwards. So that's plus T. And that equals to W. So that's pretty, it's a pretty straightforward question as well. And as I say with the last question, I doubt if such a, it's certainly possible as a question. It would probably be the first question on your A-level paper for the mechanics part. I suspect it'd be a lower allocation. I think we'd probably be looking at more like five than we would seven these days. But anyway, T sine alpha would be um that's t which is 7.5 times sine alpha which is equal to 3 over 5 plus t which is 7.5 equals to w so we've got the we already know what t is at 7.5 and we know that we've done our resolving so all everything's good we've got w equals to that's 2.5, that's going to uh, 1.5, 4.5 plus 7.5, which is equal to uh, 12 newtons. And that's it. Very straightforward question as well, but it just highlights the importance of uh, being able to resolve into directions and uh, making sure we get our sign and our cos the right way around okay i hope you found this uh somewhat useful and we'll leave it there bye